Hello and welcome back. Today we're going to do a little bit of cleanup. Uh, I noticed uh, Mac and Linux don't currently compile, so let's just go through each of those platforms, uh, clean those up, and then we'll uh, look at something else that I noticed on the Windows side, and just get everything nice and uh, up to date before we move on to input. So I'm on my Mac side here, uh, and I'm just going to first of all remove the bin-obj folder. Um, this is basically like running a clean in Visual Studio. So this is, uh, we should probably make a command for it in the CLI uh, as a tool, but uh, for now I just have to manually do it. So I'm just gonna uh, sort of clean everything up and then regen, rebuild, and just see what fails. And the reason we're doing this here now is because I noticed that um, there, there is a discrepancy between the include paths between hippo and hippo editor. We did this on purpose a couple of videos back when we were setting everything up, and I don't think it's the right approach anymore. So I sort of want to show like what I'm seeing on the Mac side and how we can go ahead and fix that. So here you can see it failed. It, it uh, Graphics slash render commands can't find it. Now you can see when it built Hippo, it's right there. Render Manager was able to compile properly, but when we're building Hippo Editor, it the same line fails. And that's what I'm talking about there, that, that include path, right? From the Hippo Editor side, we need that Hippo prefix in the in the folder before we, we try to access anything internally. So switching over to premake 5lua we're just going to scroll down a little bit, and here you see that we've included the hippo subfolder in the hippo project, right? And we did this so we didn't have to type hippo every time. Uh, now I'm realizing we really should just keep them sort of aligned across both projects. Having done that now, obviously, we have to go and update everywhere where we do it, where we include a hippo file. Uh, so this is me basically just going through uh, all, of, all of the files that we currently have in hippo and ensuring that I add that hippo prefix now that we need it. So now I'll just use Sami clean there and then uh, just regen and rebuild. So we should make a clean command, we'll probably do that at some point in the future. Um, since we already have had some issues with Visual Studio on the Windows side with that, with having to clean uh, some of the project settings. And you can see that it does. So if I run it, uh, I think we ended the last video with uh, a wireframe version of our color interpolated cube. I think we didn't like the wireframe, so running it again. And it seems that my screen recording software on the Mac side isn't capturing <laughs> the uh, the actual app, so you can't see it. But I can assure you this fixes the problem, and it looks as expected. So now we can switch over to the Linux side. So what you're watching me do here is just pull the latest from main, which is our uh, main branch. You can see I now have the Mac fix on my Linux side. So again, I'm just going to clean and regenesis and rebuild here on the on the Linux side. Now you can see we have a linker error here on the hippo editor side. So from glib li, so from libglad, uh, it's saying it, the DSO is missing from the command line for libdl. So for OpenGL on the Linux side, we need to include um, a DL as its own library alongside GLAD. So here's premake5.lua. I'm just scrolling down here to see. So the Hippo project, um, that's the Linux side there, but we don't do anything right because uh, everything is linked on the Hippo editor side since that's the actual executable. So you can see the this is Windows, uh, Mac, and uh, Linux here. So we link to STL2, GLAD, and now we'll also link to DL. So I'll just regen and rebuild. This should be a quick one. And you can see that everything works. Now, you'll notice my run is going to fail here. Um, so you, you saw it fail there with uh, GLX bad FB config. This is a, a, a problem with uh, me running this virtual machine, this Linux virtual machine. Uh, it's not, not actually able to use my GPU that's on my actual PC. It's trying to use something internal uh, provided by VMware. So you can see it can't create the PGL context because it can't, uh, it can't actually do that on the on whatever graphics sort of abstraction layer VMware is setting up here. Uh, I will try and get something set up with a Linux on, on 
as a primary uh, OS just to make sure that everything's running correctly. Um, but for now, I think the coverage between Windows and Mac will be, su will su be sufficient. So now let's switch over to the Windows side. Let's sync all this stuff up and then see where we're at. So here we are on the Windows side. Again, I've pulled the latest and you can see everything's running correctly. But when I try to close the game normally, you can see it's not ending the, so the, the program, right? Like everything's still running. There's, there's a hang here. Um, and it's not able to sort of gracefully exit. So let's try that again. And um, usually when I'm dealing with a hang, I'll just pause and I'll just see where it paused. And usually it tells me right away sort of where the hang is. Uh, and in this case, you can see it's hung inside this uh, while loop. And, and this is for our call to check uh, if there's an error in OpenGL. All right, so you can see we have the, the while loop, we're checking in the, the logger, we're trying to log something. Um, and so I'm just sort of stepping through to make sure that that speed log isn't like unavailable or causing any issues. But truly the error here is that you can see error is still valid. So we go over again and we're stuck in an infinite loop here because there is an OpenGL error and we're not handling it. Uh, our assert is actually in the wrong place. Um, so you see, we, we never asserted. We also never printed anything. Um, so the, by moving the assert in here, we'll at least be able to see that there is an error we should assert immediately and that will actually tell us exactly where the problem is coming from. So that was just a mistake from when we first built this where the assert was outside the while loop. So yes, there's an error. There will always be an error if we don't handle it, which we don't. So uh, that's why that was happening. So now if I close this, the assert should tell me at least where we are. Right? You can see we, we, we are correctly asserting, but we're not printing anything. Um, so I'm just sort of looking through and trying to understand why, why we're not printing anything if we have a hippo error call right before it. So if we look at the call stack on the bottom right, you can see we're coming from after engine run is called, we come from somewhere else and there was a shader um, destructor. So I'll just move this up a little bit. Um, and you see again, so, so, so the problem is there. So if we, if we look at where we came from, you can see we're calling shutdown and then we're sort of going outside of that scope. And if you look here, we have our share pointers for mesh and shader. Um, and they, uh, they are built with RAII in mind, so they're gonna clean themselves up when they're destructed. Uh, you might already notice that the problem is that we're calling shutdown and shutting everything down before they're destructed, right? So we're trying to make OpenGL calls after the window's been closed, basically. Um, that, that, that summarizes the issue. So if we just scope everything before we call shutdown, uh, this will ensure that those, uh, that mesh and that shader, and we're just gonna fix this, uh, this up a little bit, Visual Studio did most of the work, but so yeah. So now this this shared pointer for mesh and shader, they're going to actually destruct themselves when they reach the end of that scope. Then we'll call shutdown, which will shut everything down, including our window. Now, I did notice the log manager was getting shut down early, like before M window does shut down, and maybe we want M window to shut down to print something or to assert or do something. So we'll just move the log manager down, and uh, we'll ensure that it's sort of shut down after the fact. Now, I did have a thought here where maybe the log manager was getting shut down too early and that's why we weren't getting our print. So move the shutdown back up, but this is this is not gonna work. Um, really, what's what's happened is that, that the, the error occurs when we reach the end of that scope. Um, and because we've already shut down, we're not, we're not printing anything, we're not properly making any OpenGL calls, which is why there's constantly an OpenGL error. So if that didn't work, that's fine. We'll just put the shutdown back where it is. Either way, all of this is temporary. Like the, the fact that we have a mesh and a shader sort of defined here anyways is really just because we don't have it pulled out into our client app yet. So this, this error issue is not gonna happen. It's not, a, it's not something we really have to worry about. We just have to fix it for now. I also noticed that if we look at window.cpp, we're calling create window on SDL, we're calling create context, but we only shut down the window. Uh, we only destroy the window, so we need to delete that OpenGL context as well. This is mostly just something that I'm overlooked, um, and it's really for cleanup purposes. It, I believe SDL might already do this on the back end when you call SDL underscore quit, but I'm not, I'm not entirely sure. Better safe than sorry just to put it in here. But now that we've scoped that stuff properly, you should be able to see that when I close it, the, we, the program ends successfully, and, and we get that sort of prompt to, to wrap everything up. So that's pretty much it. Um, that's really what I wanted to do now, just to get this sort of cleanup stuff out of the way. Uh, in the next video, we'll tackle um, mouse and keyboard input so we can do something on the screen that's a little more interesting than what we see now. So stay tuned for that. See you next time.